what's up folks welcome back to thursday night live stream top five baits answer all your questions let you know what you want to know or at least maybe not what you want to know but we will give you the truth about the fishing conditions and what's going on right here on your lake fort guide as you get in here tonight please drop me a comment to let me know you're present and accounted for so no we didn't lose any y'all it's been a fun week folks we had a big warming trend. We caught a lot of bass. Man, not really been doing great at posting pictures, but we've been catching them, like a lot of them. And now it's a cold front. And like, it's funny because the lake got real crowded. You may have saw my post earlier today. The lake got real crowded. A lot of people fishing everywhere. It was awesome to see the lake get that crowded this early in the year. Somewhere in the back of my head, I can't help but think a lot of it is you guys have been watching me talk about these warming trends earlier in the year, especially the last couple of years may have seen some of the success we've had, but we've really caught some big bags of fish earlier in the year that most people really like to get out there on these warming trends, and I uh, certainly hope some of you guys have benefited from it, because that's why we do what we do, but um, yeah, lake's been real crowded, and then today, it was a ghost town. There was nobody there. I didn't see... I saw two other guide trucks and one other, one other just, I don't know who it was, trailer at all the ramps. So I saw four boats at the, like, four or five boat ramps that I went to today that I drove past anyway. Um, didn't see anybody on the water at all. I mean, it, it was ghost town. Here's the deal, though. Don't be scared of that first day. Maybe not even that second day. When that cold front blows through, you know, it was warm this morning, got cold like 7, 8 o'clock this morning, started getting cold. It takes a lot of time for that water to turn, so they still bite. Like, they still bite. They might still bite a little bit tomorrow. Now, by the time we get to Saturday, you'll be able to catch them, but it'll be a completely different situation. Completely different situation when you get to two or three days after the cold front. You'll have to really focus on different type of areas than you do on a warm trip. So tonight, because you guys will be fishing this weekend, we're going to talk about how to catch them after the cold takes effect, after the water temperatures have really started dropping again, and uh, those fish are kind of lethargic and drawn up in them drains and ditches, Captain Ron in the house down there in Mexico. What's up, Captain? So, first things first, guys. When it gets really shallow, we've talked about it a million times, but they get way in the backs of these creeks on these really, really shallow expanse of flat. That's where they go. Today, they're still out there because the water temperature takes time for that water temperature change. That water temperature was still 60 degrees, 58 degrees, 59, like they're still biting. As that water drops four, five, six, seven degrees over the next couple days, maybe 10 degrees over the next few days, those fish that are on that flat, they're not going back to the main lake, okay? Once they go in, they don't go out. What they do is they find the first drop off and then they go to the next drop off and then they go to the next drop off, depending on how long it stays cold, which it ain't gonna stay cold very long. We get another big warm trend coming in about eight, nine, 10 days, something like that. So what you need to do is find those expensive areas where those fish have gone or might have gone. Find the creek channels and drains in the middle of those. Those fish will all suck back and condense into those drains and creek channels. And for the guys that really know what they're doing and can stay out there and grind on those fish in those drains, even though they're more lethargic and they really don't want to bite, if you throw some of these reaction baits we're going to talk about tonight, you can actually catch them better when they group up and condense in those creek channels, because when they get grouped up in those little ditches and drains and channels, if you will sit there and beat on them and beat on them, beat on them, throw them reaction baits, rip them baits out of grass, hit stops with crankbaits, stuff like that, once you get a couple of them to react, you can catch some really big fish, and you can catch a lot of them all in one spot instead of having to cover a big flat area. So, still able to be done. So let's talk about what baits I would recommend to use. Now keep in mind, some of these baits, We've been using the last few days. The the chatterbait, the trap started working real good this morning. Uh, the chatterbait's been working, of course. Um, some of these baits are not what we've been using this week, but what I am saying we need to use this weekend. So keep that in mind as we talk about them. And the first and foremost, to me, is going to be the, the lipless crankbait. Six cents Quake 70. This is my favorite color right now. We got real dirty water, real dirty, dirty water in a lot of these areas. And they're in that dirty water, guys. Tiger Truce. Orange back, gold stripes, chartreuse bottom, give it a lot of flash in that dirty water, make it stand out. Still kind of this traditional crawl pattern in wintertime. Uh, lipless crank video. 
That's my number one bait on Lake Fork for this weekend. It has such a tight wiggle. It makes so much noise. It jerks out of that grass, and it just makes them react. No matter how lethargic they want to be, they can't stand it when that thing just comes by there like Ronnie Kelly just rattling its head. Like if you hung around Ronnie Kelly and he kept walking by you, eventually you'd probably slap him too. I mean, that's just how it goes. You got to slap something well, quit rattling. When something rattles in the back of your truck long enough, what do you do? You turn around and slap it, don't you? Same thing with a trap and a bass or Captain Ron and anybody. Number two, and this has been the color for me, the black and blue, 3 8 ounce bladed jig, chatterbait, vibrating jig, whatever you want to call it, live magic shed trailer. Or you can use, I am using, I don't, I don't have it on this one. I, yesterday I was using that uh, blade aid from Heath Taylor. And I think that may be a warmer water deal. I think still in the cold water, the live magic shed is the way to go. But in that warm water, that blade aid was getting it done. We just catch them on it. And you will see that on some video content next week. So be sure you're watching. Somebody's asking what the water temp. Well, the water temp in some areas got as high as like 65 degrees in some extreme cases. Most of the backs of the creeks were 62, 63, somewhere in there. As of yesterday afternoon, today, a lot of them were 60, 61, 59, 58. And it's going to continue to drop. By the time you guys are out there this weekend, it's probably going to be 55, 50 to 55. Um, Third bait, and this will probably come into play on Sunday specifically because when it gets calm and that sun comes out, I think it's going to be calm on, on Sunday. But the old five inch stick bait right here, just a black and blue stick bait up in that dirty water in those drains, when that water gets real calm, especially when the sun comes out, it's time to pick up that black and blue stick bait, man. They go to biting it. Fourth, moving ADX. Chartreuse Blackback has been the color I'm using the most. Uh, you could use you know, some of the red colors. Crawl colors might work too. I like Lava Truce is another really good color. But the Movement ADX, when you're in an area that's got all that grass and you want to throw that trap, but you keep getting that trap hung up because there's a bunch of stumps in that area, maybe that drain that you're fishing is lined with stumps and you keep getting hung up, go to that Movement ADX. It'll bang around off those stumps and get even more reaction by it sometimes. Uh, it can be really, 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 really effective. You know what? I'm going to tell you. I told you top five baits. That's the four I would stick with. Now, there's one more I want to show you guys. Because <laughs> me and Heath Taylor did some damage on it yesterday. Uh, there's been some guys catching some fish on swim baits out at Lake Fork on this warming trend. Now, this won't be so much for this weekend. But when we get this next warming trend. Oh, it's way over here. Hey, when we get this next warming trend. You'll see it on some videos here over the next couple weeks. We're fishing a warming trend, and the weedless poacher is everything that it's been hyped up to be, guys. It will stroke them. Like, they destroy this thing. Captain Ron has been smacking them down there on Lake Falcon with it. And uh, you know what? We got our first little peek at it with that 61, 62-degree water, and they absolutely demolished this thing. We caught some big fish on it. We caught a bunch of fish on it. It's just everything that I thought it would be. It's that and more. So, <clears throat> there's your five baits. Remember, this swim bait I do not recommend for this weekend with this cold trend. But, the next time it warm trends, it's, it's in. It's all the way in. I'll tell you what. Who wants to see... And yes, I'm fishing. The black and blue has been the best color. I'm throwing both black and blue. Somebody asked, am I fishing a black chatterbait over a white chatterbait right now? Yes. Um, I'm throwing both. But most days, the black and blue has been my best color on the chatterbait. Who wants to see a sneak peek of, a, of some of the weedless poacher in action? I've actually got some files on this little computer right here. I can pull you guys up a little clip and give you guys just a little bit of a raw uncut sneak peek at how that went down if you want to see it drop it in the comments and let me know bring it yes everybody wants to see it all right well cool so me and heath taylor actually went out yesterday and filmed on a couple different lakes got a couple different videos worth of content for the for the next uh next session of videos that's coming out oh man i didn't label them yet i gotta find this clip let's see here 
All right, y'all bear with me just a second. Bear with me. Sorry about this. What kind of question? JD Atnip in here? Yes, yes, yes. It's all, the Wheelers Poacher is definitely already available for somebody if that's what you're asking. Almost there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I really got to prepare more before I go on live television with this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now, I'm not going to play audio on this because... I'm not 100% sure what all was said when things went crazy and this fish got caught. Let's we'll see if y'all can see this. Oh, and you're going to get to see. Let's see here. Okay. Let me get us over here. All right, here we go. Get it focused in. All right, so he's reeling in. There he, oh, there he is. Here he comes. <laughs> And he, just so you know, the fish ran right at him. And I'm like, man, what's he got? And it wasn't really bowing his rod up much. And all of a sudden, he catches up to it. And you see me freak out? <laughs> the fish surfaced, and Heath kind of lost his mind for a second and kind of spazzed me out. And I'm like, we're in Heath Taylor's boat. And I'm like, dude, where's your net? He's like, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm like, never mind. I'll get him. And now the wind's about to blow my shirt up, and you guys are going to get to see more of me than you probably want to. We'll try to edit that out in the final video, but you're going to have to deal with it for now. Yep, there it is. This is my first uh, X-rated profile right here, folks. Check it out, boys. How about that right there? Huh? That's pretty good. That is a giant, as you can see. Let's see. Let me get to a good shot of it right here. Look at that. How about that? So there's your little sneak peek. Heath Taylor, the weedless poacher. And we caught a bunch of them like that. Well, not quite like that, but we caught a bunch of really good fish. What hook do I like? I like an ADOT hook. Um, I like an ADOT belly weighted hook. I like, I've even like got right there, I've got it rigged up on a 10 aught weightless hook that I just put some, uh, some lead strips on so that I could go real slow with it today as that water was cooling off. Uh, but I like throwing it on the ADOT flashy swimmer and the ADOT belly weighted without the blade as well. Somebody asked if I fish the Guggen baits. I have fished the Guggen baits. They're very good baits. Going to be there first week in April. Will we be too late on the spawn? No. That's like going to be the prime spawn. Like It's going to be on like Donkey Kong during that time. Yeah, the poacher is available. Smash earlier when the poacher is available. The poacher is available right now at smashtechbaits.com. For this weekend, would you pick up a chatterbait over a flashy spinner and underspin? Yeah, for this weekend, absolutely. That's why I didn't include it. Uh, there's been some guys catching fish on smaller swim baits, like the swim baits that are kind of along the lines of the Smash Tail, Smash Tail Junior. Uh, people have been catching fish on swim baits like that on underspin, you know, um, the flashy swimmer hooks. Um, that was going good while the water was warm. Now that it's kind of cool trending and getting colder, um, I would definitely pick a chatterbait over that. What about a Carolina rig? Um... Man, if you're going to go fish out deep, you know, a Finesse Carolina rig might not be a bad way to go this weekend. I'll go with that. You know, Finesse Carolina rig, actually, boy, that's, man, you just, that's why I love this. Because Bass Rats, you just opened my eyes and reminded me of something we used to do all the time. Even growing up as a kid and even when I first started fishing for it, man, we did a bunch of this and we caught them really good in these situations. When they pull back in them drains after that warming trend, they stack up in them ditches and drains. A Finesse Carolina rig with a lizard on it. I've caught a million bass on that, and I'm actually going to tie that on. That's a great idea. That's going to be a great bait. I'd put it right back in my top five, and I ain't throwing that, and I can't tell you when, 
but I'm going back to it tomorrow. Thank you, sir. That was a great question. And yes, it will work. Very much so in this situation of a cool trend after a warm trend. Have I stuck any rattles in the poacher? I have not stuck any rattles in the poacher. Are you using swim baits in March? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> What's happening on the north end of the lake, north of 515? Well, the deal right now is the backs of the creeks. You don't have to be necessarily north of 515. You can go to the back of Ray and Dale. You can go to the back of Birch. You can go to the back of Glade. You can go back of just everywhere. I mean, just the backs of the creeks warmed up and the fish got piled up in them. Can you send me open dates that you have for a trip? Well, I don't have any dates open for a trip until May 6th, I think it is. May 2nd or May 6th. But I have some other guys that I work with. Captain Ron, Mike McFarlane, some other guys as well um, that we work with to make sure that you're going to get the best guide trip experience you can possibly get. So whether you get to go with me or you get to go with another guy, we're going to make sure we take extra good care of you. You can check everything out and contact us at yourlakefortguide.com or the phone number that's posted in all the videos as well. Um, if you just particularly want to go with me, though, into it, like I'm the only guy you want to go with, then May 2nd, it's either May 2nd or May 6th is my next open date. But either way, send us a message. You're like fortguide.com. We'll get you fixed up. Do I use a shorter leader on a Carolina rig? Yes. When I'm fishing it shallow, okay, we're talking about fishing a finesse Carolina rig, like no, like a quarter ounce. And we're fishing it in shallow ditches and drains and, you know, in the middle of these big expansive shallow flats. And so we're probably going to be fishing this thing any deeper than four or five, maybe six foot at the most. And I'm going to use about an 18-inch leader on a quarter ounce finesse Carolina rig. Somebody asked, do we still have the mini SD cards? I assume you're talking about the guide in the graph map chip that we did uh, last year. No, we, we've converted that. It is an app now. It's the Fish Life app. And finally, the Apple version, the iTunes version, should be available within the next week, I think. But it's Apple, so I'm not promising anything because, holy cow, is Apple ridiculous to deal with. Where is the best place to launch in the morning that is wind checked? It depends on the wind direction. Tomorrow it's going to be a north northeast wind. So, Oak Ridge will actually have a pretty good ramp to launch at because it'll be north northeast. Uh, Minnow Bucket will be a good ramp to launch at tomorrow. Um, on the west side, Lake Fork Marina is always a good ramp to launch at, it's real protected. Uh, the Joe Spades ramp, the little, must, the little Mustang ramp will be a good one to launch at tomorrow with the wind direction. Lee and Chase Garth, man, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, bud. How much for you to just let me drive behind you, LOL? Well, you probably can't keep up, LOL. No, I'm just kidding. Oh uh, man, you know I don't do that. I don't. I don't like doing the follow boat deal. Um, some guys do book a trip and then book a follow boat. I don't do that. I just here's the deal. Even if you come and follow behind me, I don't get to kind of tell you, hey, there's that sweet spot of that drain over there. You know, and plus you're fishing behind me, and not that I'm the greatest fisherman or anything like that. But the areas that I do fish, I do know extremely well. I know where the fish are liable to stack up at. I know where they've been stacking up at, and it's probably going to be a little bit difficult to catch them behind us. You know, when we have the extensive amount of knowledge that we do on the areas we're fishing. Not that I'm that great, but you know what I'm saying. I hope, hope. I'm not trying to be cocky at all on that when I say that. Did I catch any of the MLF BPT? I didn't get to watch any of it, but I saw the results. Man, that thing, that's the future, guys. I mean, it's appropriate that that's called Major League Fishing because they just made everything else minor league fishing. <laughs> and you know what I mean. And it's, I mean, there's Bassmaster Series going on right now. And I mean, Major League Fishing is just, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the major leagues. It's the big deal now. It is. They've, it's awesome. They're doing a phenomenal job with that. Saw the video that we reloaded this week. Will the northwest corner still run still run true this weekend? Can you expand on it? Yeah, it will. Um, I'll try to expand. I don't really know how to say it much different than what I said in the video, but 
So when we're talking about these warming trends like we had all this whole week going on until today. That northwest corner gets the most sunlight. So all things even, that northwest corner will warm up faster than any other section of the back of that creek. Um, now, when you get that surface water warming up and that wind's blowing one particular direction for several days in a row, it can vary that a little bit. Now this week, those northern banks were getting the wind all week. So they're getting that warm surface water that heats up and that wind kind of eases some of that you know, warmer surface temp water into that section of that, that flat. Definitely the northern banks in all the creeks were the warmer ones uh, all week long. Now we've got a north wind flipped plus it's cool trending. So they won't necessarily be the, the warmest ones. But what will happen is those fish got the thickest in those north northwest corners. So the ditches and drains that are closest to those northwest corners are going to be the ones that have the most fish getting in them. Because those fish aren't going to leave. Like we said, they're not going to leave. They're going to pull out of that flat. Hunker down in that first drain ditch, creek channel, whatever they can get. Try to find a creek channel swing close to that. They'll hunker down right in that. And you fish those areas very thorough and very methodically. So now let's get to uh, the salty topic of the night. A little bit of drama, I guess you might say. I don't know, man. It's apparently... <laughs> Be careful how I say this. Apparently, I heard, I heard through the grapevine. I haven't really seen this crap, but I've heard that uh, because I guess I haven't been posting pictures or something. Somebody, another guy out here, was trying to uh, insinuate that maybe uh, I'm not catching them or I don't know how to catch them or something like that during this time of year. <laughs> Which is funny because it's like one of my very favorite times of year. Um... And, you know, here's the deal. What we were going to do, because it kind of made me mad, you know, I don't like people talking about being behind my back like that. So we were actually going to put a package on the app with that guy's name on it and just every time we saw him fishing, mark his spots on there and uh, just give give all his information away for free. Um, and we did a little trial run on it, and we quickly realized that nobody was downloading it, even though it was free, because nobody knows who he is. So I'm not going to help him by saying his name. What are you looking for to find a bass bed? Well, um, you're looking for a bass. <laughs> no, uh, you know that's boy. That's a there's a lot of little clues. Um, they like to spawn against something. So usually, as you're going down a bare flat stretch of bank, they like to spawn real tight up against something, and. So that's kind of where I start looking. I start looking against, if I see a laydown sticking out in the water, they love to spawn against a laydown. If I see just some little cattails or reed heads of some kind, Johnson grass, whatever, on the bank, they like to spawn up against that type of stuff. If you have hydrilla or coontail, like real thick stuff, it's really easy because they'll just create a hole in the grass and it stands out like a sore thumb. So you're just looking for a little round area that kind of sticks out to you. But more than that, you're looking for movement. Like you're just watching, you got to train your eyes to watch for something to move in the water and then identify if that's a bass. And then once you identify if that's a bass, you got to identify how fast does he leave? Does he turn around and look at the bed while I'm on top of him? Like how committed to that spot is he? Because if he's not committed to that spot at all, you're not going to catch him. But if he like lets you get real close to him and then he takes off, but he turns right back around or he just kind of eases off and then looks back at his bed, you can catch that fish. You just got to go past him, flip around, stay further back, mentally mark where he was and throw to that area. You usually will catch him. Um... You know, that's that's kind of what you look for. You look for little round, odd things, and, and they usually are right up against stuff close to the bank somewhere. Sometimes they're not close to the bank at all, depending on how flat the area is. I mean, that's, God dang, there's just so many variables there. That's just, I mean, that's a the deal there where it's 100,000% worth it to hire somebody that likes to bed fish, that's a full-time professional that guides all the time or fishes the tour or something like that. Hire somebody as a guide that likes to bed fish and have them teach you how to find beds. Like, that's the best way to do that. Do I have any tips for Lake Tyler? <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> um, man, I ain't been on Lake Tyler in years and years and years. The last time I went to Lake Tyler, I think I was crappie fishing like seven years ago or something crazy like that, six years ago. Um, I don't have any information. If I was to just take a rough guess on what I know about Lake Tyler, 
Um, I would think that with them, docks seem to be a big point of structure for them since all the grass is gone. Uh, I would try to find some docks with a, with a little bit of depth on them at the mouth of some really shallow, flat areas. And I would fish those docks as, they, as if they were my creek channel bend type homes that I use on Fork. That's probably where I would start on Lake Tyler right now. Just That's just a raw guess. I have no idea how good that is. Would a trailer like a Minus Grub work well on the Black Lucifer? Sure it would. Minus Grub would be good. I don't know if I'd do it in the cold weather because it's got all this going on. You know, it flaps a lot. I'd probably stick with the straight tail type trailers right now in the cold water. What's the water temp on Fork right now? <laughs> Dang, well, we've answered that question a bunch tonight. Um, it got up to highs like 63, 64 this week. Today, it was anywhere in the backs of the creeks. It was anywhere from like 62 to 58, 59. Um, by the time you guys fish this weekend, it's probably going to be 50 to 55 degrees, depending on where you are. Very, you're very, very welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. I know I missed some questions. If you got one that I missed, you want to drop it back in, I'll be happy to try to answer it as fast as I can. When are the shell beds going to light up? Uh, the shell beds, well, we've got a little cool trend now. Those main lake fish are a little bit more prone to move in a big way as far as moving further out off them. I'm sure there was probably some starting to have fish pull in on them a little bit this week with the drastic warming trend we had. But I would think that the very first few fish that show up on them, and they're not going to be like dynamite when this happens. It'll take a little time. But um, I would think the very first groups of fish that pull up on them are going to happen on this next warming trend that we'll have in about eight days or so. Will the fish that we're catching right now in creek bends return to those creek bends in the summer? Sometimes, it depends on what's available. I find in the summer, they like a little bit, um, they, they like uh, a different type of structure than a creek bend. It seems like more to me. Now, I know there's some guys that catch, there are fish that use creek bends, and there are guys that catch them on creek bends in the summer. I tend to fish more of the, you know, big main lake points. Excuse me, guys, allergies with the warming trend have got me pretty good this week. But, uh, yeah, big main lake points and, like, big humps, um, big long ridges that run out to humps, stuff like that is kind of what I tend to catch them on more in the summer, more so than creek bends. Fishing with Captain Ron on March 20. You think the bed fishing will be on. Uh, March 20 is a tough one because March 20 is the day of the full moon. Um, there will be some fish on beds. It may not be enough to where you really want to target them doing it because a lot of times on the day of the full moon, they're just getting there. They haven't really locked into the beds yet. They're not real catchable. But Captain Ron will do a phenomenal job of letting you know that either way. I'd be willing to bet you I'm going to throw some swim baits some of the day that time of year, more than likely. Um, and Captain Ron's really good. Like he's proven down there at Falcon, he's catching a lot of big fish on swim baits. He's going to do that kind of same deal around that time of March, I would guess. Um, but bed fishing may or may not be a really good option on that particular day. Now, if it's like a couple days after the full moon, then it's like, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, a black and blue trig, jig and the creek channel swing still work. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so that's the deal too. Like these fish that pulled in the back of these creeks, not all of them pulled back there. Now, there's still a lot of fish out on the main lake, of course. Well, those fish that got up out of those deep creek bends during this warming trend, are going to go right back to them on this cool trend. So absolutely, the black and blue jig in a creek bend is still a very, very viable option that I will be putting into play as well this weekend. Barry says, we chased the, black, <laughs> chased the creek bend black blue jig bite today. Sounds like we need to scrap that. that <clears throat> this is a... Uh, the traditional Texas two-step time of year. They take two steps forward and one step back. We had a warming trend. They pushed up shallow backs of the creeks. Now we got a cool trend. They're going to start sucking back into the bends. So you don't necessarily need to scrap that if you're fishing this weekend. Like the creek, the jig bite on the creek bends could be the deal this weekend for sure. But the next time we get a warming trend, those fish will pull right back out of them creek bends. Like it's a constantly moving target when you get these warm and cool trends. Are we going to catch a Mondo this May? Sam Taylor's. <laughs> 
Sam, we're going to do our best, buddy. I mean, if we have half the luck we did last year, we will, for sure. Mr. Sam Taylor is a young man. I don't remember exactly how old he is, but he's fairly young. And uh, he caught like a nine-pounder. The first fish he ever caught with me was a nine-pounder. <laughs> we set the standard high, buddy. It's going to be tough to beat that one. We're going to give it hell. How do I think the bite will be on March 2nd? And where would they be at that time? It all depends on the trend of the weather, bud, just like we just talked about. All right. Well, hey, man, we're about at the end of the time for tonight. Appreciate you guys filling up the register. A bunch of you guys joining us tonight, man. Really appreciate that. Certainly hope some of this information helps y'all. Man, it's just awesome. It's an awesome time of year. Man, the, the pre-spawn deal is here. It's here to stay. Uh, they'll back out and slow down a little bit, you know, like we talked about tonight. But they're there, guys. They're there. And if you're methodical enough in the right areas, you can still catch them. Man, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But there's some really big fish and really big bags there to be had. So get out there, grind on it. Enjoy being out there in the awesome outdoors of East Texas or wherever you're at. And uh, hopefully you catch a giant because it's very possible right now. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fort Guide.